Um, so today I wanted to do a video um, just explaining signs and symptoms of aplastic anemia basically. So I'm going back to them type of videos now again. Um, just things to look out for because it's not something that gets diagnosed much I suppose because like, it's quite a, like a rare condition. So I thought I'd run through um, signs to look out for and what symptoms people tend to get and then what symptoms I got. So let's get to it. Right, so I'm going, to, I'm going to be looking down at my phone because I've written them all down and I don't want to forget things, right? Signs and symptoms. So a few of them are, okay, um, so headaches, bruising, shortness of breath, lack of energy, um, so fatigue, things like that, um, having infections really easily and um, fevers and things, rapid heart rate, pale skin, bleeding gums and dizziness. So I'll go through a few of them as to why you might be getting them. So um, bruising really easily. So if your platelets are low, you will see a lot of bruising. Like say you, you know, hit your hand against something really lightly, you could end up having a really big bruise on there because um, your blood's not clotting. So the, how can I say this in any other way? It's like building up on your skin then, which then brings a bruise, obviously. Shortness of breath. If you've got a low HB, so the low hemoglobin, you're, um, you'll be getting a lot, lot of shortness of breath because obviously the blood there's not enough blood carrying oxygen around your body, so it makes you really short of breath, even like short distances and things like that. And rapid heart rate also comes in with this one. So low HB means that you know your heart's going to be working a lot quicker to try and pump more blood around, so you have more oxygen going around the body. But infections really easy and fever. So when your white cells and your neutrophils are down, um, then you'll realise you'll be having a lot, a lot of fevers, um, really random infections you'll be catching really easily, like throat infections, ear infections, anything like that. Um, oh, and bleeding gums. But bleeding gums that comes in with low platelets then as well. So that goes back to the um, bruising thing. It kind of goes together. So my symptoms um, before I got diagnosed was mainly a fever. That's what I found was first, well, that's what I, how I noticed something was wrong to begin with. Um, fatigue, I was really tired. I thought it was because I was working a lot at the time or maybe something like that. But no, it was due to this. Um, and also I had a bit of weight loss. But I think that's because I lost my appetite due to having like infections and things. And I was just not eating much at all at the time. So they were the only symptoms I presented with to begin with. And then more things started coming up then um, when I was having blood tests and things. So they did realise after doing my B12 blood test, my B12 was very low. So they originally thought that that could be why the other symptoms are coming up. But turns out it, it, it wasn't. But oh, they could they could actually show the same symptoms or having a really low b12 could actually um like come up with the same symptoms as a plastic anemia but it, once the b12 is replaced everything starts resolving by itself then the last thing i'm going to run through also is causes of um what causes a plastic anemia so a few of them and again on my phone a few of them are um, radiation and chemo treatments um so if, mainly for people who've got cancer, isn't it? So that could bring on aplastic anemia. Um, exposure to toxic chemicals, autoimmune disorders. At the start, they thought that that's what was causing mine was an autoimmune disorder, but I actually ended up didn't have any autoimmune problems. Um, use of certain drugs, uh, viral infections. Um, I think, what was it? Uh, glandular fever. Back a few months before, I had... Well, I came back that I had a positive... EBV um, screen, I think I think it's a screen or a po like when they tested me for the EBV, the Epstein Barr virus, which is the glandular fever, I came back positive, which means I'd had it in the last few weeks of that time. But then they tested me for it then and I didn't have it. So I thought that might have brought it on, but it didn't. That's the doctor said it didn't anyway. Um, pregnancy can bring it on and the main well, the main cause is unknown. Most people that are diagnosed with aplastic anemia, they have an unknown cause, which was 
what happened to me really. They didn't know what caused it and it was just completely random basically. Um, and that's about it really. That, that's they're the main things to look out for. Um, obviously, you know, get them checked out if you do get these type of symptoms, um, like persist, like then they they're persistent, you know, because they could be symptoms of many other things as well. But it's really important to get it checked out. And if you think that something's not right, always go to the doctors. That's a mistake. I well, I say mistake I didn't do, but I was unwell for a few weeks before, but I just thought it would pass, and obviously it didn't. So, get yourself checked out. That's my advice to you. Um, so yeah, short video, um, signs and symptoms and causes, and for it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel, please, and I'll see you soon.